subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. This weekend, the Earth was hit with a geomagnetic storm because of charged particles coming from the Sun. This geomagnetic storm was caused by a powerful solar flare which released plasma and ions in the form of an accompanying coronal mass ejection. Coronal mass ejections can cause serious disruptions on Earth if they are powerful enough because the matter that is coming from the Sun is essentially charged material. We have had some scary experiences in the past and whenever there is this kind of a coronal mass ejection that is directed towards Earth, there are usually geothermal storm warnings that are put out just as it was this weekend. On the more carefree side of things, solar flares and coronal mass ejections, CMEs like these, produce spectacular and brilliant aurorae. But what are these geothermal storms? What is a coronal mass ejection? How do these events on the surface of the sun affect us here on Earth? And how have they done so in the past? We'll discuss all of this and a little bit more in this video. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. The sun has a cycle of 11 years called, of course, the solar cycle. The two extremes of these cycles are the maxima and the minima where solar activity peaks or subsides. Solar activity is usually observed as sunspots at the very base level and then has things like ejections, eruptions, flares, prominences and so on. There is a constant stream of charged particles flowing out from the sun into the solar system called the solar wind. But a solar flare is different. A solar flare is a sudden increased brightness of the sun, usually near a sunspot. These events also release plasma and particles from the sun. All these charged particles, if they're moving in the direction of Earth and hit the atmosphere, they produce aurorae. The colors of aurora borealis in the northern hemisphere and aurora australis in the southern hemisphere vary depending on the gases that are present in the upper atmosphere. The green and red colors of the aurora are because of oxygen. The blue and purple colors are because of nitrogen and so on. This is all charged particles interacting with the upper atmosphere. But the earth itself largely remains safe from the dangerous effects of these solar electromagnetic radiation thanks to our magnetosphere. The magnetosphere is a region of space surrounding an astronomical body where charged particles are affected by the magnetic field of the body. The Earth has a magnetic field because of its spinning ion core. We can visualize this in the form of magnetic field lines of the Earth's magnetosphere and this is what blocks out solar and cosmic radiation and protects all life on Earth. But these field lines can be affected by powerful charged plasma that stream out from the sun in events like a coronal mass ejection. Sometimes a very powerful solar flare can have an accompanying mass ejection like this. And mass here actually means that the sun has expelled some material from its corona, not just electromagnetic radiation. After the ejection of this mass from the sun, there is a shock wave that is released. This shockwave moves through space, through the solar system, and if and when it hits Earth, it distorts the magnetosphere. It compresses the magnetosphere on the day side, which is facing the sun, and then extends it outward on the night side in the form of a magnetic tail. This change in structure, of course, causes magnetic field lines to break and then reconnect, which releases energy into the Earth's atmosphere. This release of energy is what causes a geomagnetic storm. Such geomagnetic storms can potentially disrupt anything we have that uses electromagnetic radiation here on Earth and runs on electromagnetic radiation. Coronal mass ejections can interfere with satellites, with communications, with radio transmission, the electric grid and infrastructure leading to long power outages and can even expose humans that are flying in airplanes or especially astronauts in the space station to radiation hazards from solar particle events. 
it is protons that make up the solar particle events instead of electrons a solar energetic particle event was also produced during this ejection the largest and the most powerful geomagnetic storm that has ever been recorded was experienced by earth in 1859 this storm was so powerful that the coronal mass ejection reached the earth in just about 18 hours while it normally takes at least 3 to 4 days to do so this event was called the carrington event when this coronal mass ejection hit earth aurorae were seen all around the world in fact they were visible as far south as the caribbean mexico japan china and even colombia which is so close to the equator but that was the superficial accompanying beauty on earth there was extremely heavy disruption telegraph systems were new back then barely a couple of decades old and all of them failed some operators even got electric shocks when they were operating their machines many switched off their machines but the machines continued to run and function sending and receiving messages despite being turned off the geomagnetic storm was also studied in the kolaba observatory or the bombay observatory this was the largest and most powerful geomagnetic storm we faced but it wasn't the only one we have seen hundreds there were storms in 1989 which cut power across north america and europe there were storms again in 1921 and 1960 and caused global communication disruption In 1972 there was a solar storm which broke the record for the fastest arrival of particles to earth and this was just about 14 hours shorter even than the carrington event the storm was also historically very powerful it caused electric and communications grid disturbances of course but it also caused the accidental detonation of many us mines in vietnam This storm was actually a bit of a turning point in heliophysics and research into the sun and space weather flourished even more after this particular storm. It also led to a lot of policy changes for how to work in space and deal with electromagnetic radiation, communication and so on. We narrowly missed another Carrington level event on the 23rd of July 2012. On this day a solar superstorm with a coronal mass ejection passed by the earth's orbit missing the earth by just 9 days. It was extremely powerful and had it hit earth there would have been global blackouts knocked out satellites and cut off communications for long periods of time. This was a Carrington class event that we just missed. Studies have shown that had that storm hit earth Recovery from it would have taken about 4 to 10 years. How does the sun release mass in the first place? Just like earth's magnetic field lines, the sun also has magnetic field lines but only much much more powerful. Magnetic field lines break and when two opposite magnetic fields are brought together, they reconnect. This process of magnetic reconnection releases tremendous amounts of energy that is stored in the original magnetic fields which constantly get stressed under all the energy that gets stored. Due to constant solar activity, these magnetic field lines can get stressed and twisted and can appear helical in structure. As the solar magnetic field lines twist more and more, magnetic reconnection starts to happen in the form of loop like structures when this occurs sometimes a piece of the stressed helical twisted magnetic field and the material that it encompasses is rejected as a release of built up magnetic energy this sudden release causes a solar flare and since it is so powerful this can eject the matter along with the magnetic field and the matter comes from the sun's corona this matter then expands outwards and flows into the solar system directionally solar flares are classified into a b c m and x classes with x being the strongest and each class being 10 times stronger than the previous this weekend's coronal mass ejection was caused by an x class flare 
Geomagnetic storms are classified into G1, G2, G3, G4 and G5 for minor, moderate, strong, severe and extreme storms. What we expected this weekend was a G3 class storm. Coronal mass ejections can reach speeds of over 3000 km per second and can potentially be dangerous to Earth if too powerful and if they directly hit Earth. As of shooting this video, it appears that the coronal mass ejection just grazed Earth and was not as serious as we thought it would be. Had it been, we probably might have been sitting under a radio and communications and likely a power blackout. 